Holy cow, it is bright outside this morning. <laughs> um, sun's blaring in, uh, so I'm just letting it letting it on there. Sometimes it's it's usually dark in the morning, so this just brightens it up a little bit. Um, I am dressed, ready for the cold this morning. It's supposed to warm up, but I'm ready for the cold, uh, going out to work out. But first, it's time for your unique devotion. <laughs> And uh, I need some scripture. It always helps me get rolling. So, today is John chapter 7. Uh, this is entitled, Jesus and the Religious Leaders. It's verse 32 through 36. 36? Yes, 36. So, this is John chapter 7, verses 32 through 36. Don't forget your listening ears. <laughs> The Pharisees heard the crowd murmuring these things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then Jesus said to them, I shall be with you a little while longer, and then I go to him who sent me. You will seek me and not find me, and where I am you cannot come. Then the Jews said amongst themselves, Where does he intend to go that we shall not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What is this thing that he said, You will seek me and not find me, and where I am you cannot come? There is some very interesting things here. Um, I was looking for something, but I lost my train of thought. Anyway, <laughs> let's just go right into the question that I explain. Do you actively seek God, the Holy Spirit? Now, at first glance, that doesn't really step out of the page. But, let's pause for a moment. Let's think. This is describing that particular time, pre-cross. Jesus is still... Alive, he hadn't gone through death yet. He hasn't. He hasn't put himself. He hasn't been put on the cross. He hasn't risen from the dead. But what does that have to do with us? Well, we live on the other side of that cross. He is alive. He has risen. He has given us the Holy Spirit to to guide us that they did not necessarily have. So he says, you will seek me and not find me. That's because they didn't know that he had to go to the cross yet. <laughs> they didn't know that he was going somewhere at, at his death in those three days. Because he, when he died, he was in the tomb for three days before he rose. And he went somewhere in spirit. And where I am, you cannot come. He's saying, you can't go to the cross for me. You can't go to the cross with me at this time. Is This is something I have to do for myself. But they didn't know that yet. But now we know that. We get that. We are on the other side of the cross. So we can actively uh, seek him and we will find him. We can act um, actively, actively... <laughs> go where he goes we can die on that cross not necessarily physically arms out you know bleeding to death but we can take everything that we've done in our life that's wrong take that nail in our hands and nail it to the cross with him and leave it there everything we were ashamed of every fear we've ever had Every, anything we've ever done wrong, any s sad words, any sad times, uh, any de anything that's depressing, anything that's... Even the good stuff, to a certain extent, is placed on that cross. All of our sins are placed on that cross. Our entire life and its, its meaning hinges on that cross. So not so much, not so much good stuff, but... We're definitely hanging the sins, but sins aren't necessarily little and big. What one person does, 
someone says something nasty to you today, that is just as much a sin as someone who is a murderer. If I say something nasty to someone today, and I'm not even thinking, it just happens, in God's eyes, that is just as much a sin as a murderer. And not that the consequences are stronger or the what happens is better or worse, but it's the fact that we aren't perfect and we do things that are imperfect, but everyone is given grace. Do you see that? Everything that is misplaced, whether little, like saying something bad, or something big, like something of murder, is placed on the same playing ground, on the same field of play, of sin, God doesn't, I'm trying to think of words here, God doesn't look at one less or, you know, well, that one's okay because it's a little sin. It's just that we aren't necessarily always perfect, even when we try. But he covers that. He covers that. Now, yes, someone that murders on earth, the consequences are greater. <laughs> Jail time, um, amongst other things. Um, saying something nasty, at least you can immediately or later go, hey, you know, I said that dumb thing, I'm really sorry, and get earthly forgiveness. But the fact of the matter is, it still occurred, it still happened. But we can nail that to the cross. So, the disciples couldn't go because they didn't understand yet, but we do understand. So now that I've repeated myself a couple of times, let's just ask the question one more time. Do you actively seek God, the Holy Spirit? Because now you can, because of what Jesus has done for us. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> I know that there's things that I need to focus on and think about and actively seek Him with today. And uh, hopefully there's some things that kind of jog in your mind there that you can maybe do to actively seek Him today. So, on that note, I hope God gives you all the blessings you deserve today, and even more so, all the blessings you don't deserve. Have a wonderful day.